There is a growing belief tonight that Ukraine could potentially win this war, a statement that was frankly laughable just a couple weeks ago. It's starting to buzz around. You're hearing this places. There are reports that Ukraine's military and citizen militia that they've handed out all those Kalashnikovs to have made gains in taking back territory from Russian troops. According to Ukraine's defense ministry, Ukrainian forces retook a strategically important suburb of Kiev today. Troops taking back Makariv, I believe is how you say it, that's northwest of the capital city. The State Department has not yet been able to confirm that, but they haven't denied it either. That's a big moment when you really think about it, taking back territory from the invading Russians. That's something to be proud of. But if you recall, nearly a month ago when this ridiculous invasion began, the Russians and many experts thought it might only take 48 hours for Russian troops to take the capital and overthrow the government of Ukraine. It was going to be fast, a quick operation. Here we are almost four weeks later, and the capital remains largely, largely intact. And the Russians are perhaps being pushed back. For Russia, the frustration of all this is certainly clear. Earlier today at the Pentagon, we heard this. What we have seen as they have been frustrated on the ground, they have resorted to more and more long-range fires, as we call it here, uh, bombardment by artillery, missiles, rockets. Even for all that, it's quite stunning, even for all that power, that 27 days in, they really haven't achieved any of the strategic objectives we think they were after. Haven't achieved any of the objectives we think they were after, 27 days in. The military struggles explain so much of the behavior we have seen from Putin's troops. Stories of Russian soldiers shooting themselves in the legs just to get out of fighting. Frustration leading to atrocities against innocent people. It explains that so well and also explains extremely low morale. Russian troops with any kind, any kind of a moral compass are no doubt struggling to launch an attack on their brethren. Innocent people and many no doubt are questioning their leader as every single day passes. And every day that passes, it gets worse and worse for Russia in so many different ways. Today, our White House correspondent, James Rosen, asking the question that is on everybody's mind. Are Vladimir Putin's days numbered, Jake? Are Vladimir Putin's days in power numbered? From our perspective, what happens with respect to the Russian political system is something that will be worked out inside Russia. What we can do is put forward our basic three lines of effort. That's what we're doing, helping the Ukrainians defend themselves, fortifying the NATO alliance, and imposing costs and consequences. Mm -hmm. Last night, we reported Ukrainian intelligence claims that there's evidence of a faction of power brokers inside the Russian government who are working to remove Vladimir Putin by whatever means necessary. Now, we don't know how true that is. To his people, Putin sold the invasion of Ukraine as a special operation, right? That's how he keeps putting it. That phrase, though, special operation, insinuates something kind of fast, right? Something quick. A special operation doesn't take a month or several months like this might. A special operation is a quick in and out. It's a mission accomplished by an elite force, target acquired, target destroyed, special operation. You begin to wonder how many people inside Russia and how many troops actually believe that this is anything but just an asinine invasion of a neighboring peaceful country. Russia's own media is now reporting that 10,000 Russian troops have been killed in this special operation. That ain't a special operation. That's a miserable failure. And now everybody in Russia knows it. It makes you wonder what the real number is. It could be 15 or 20,000. If Russian state media is saying it's 10,000, you know it's probably higher, and who knows? The State Department insists troop morale is a huge problem for Russian forces. Of course it is. It should be. Only the sickest of Russia's military are capable of destroying cities and people who were a part of their union just about 30 years ago. The rest, the normal ones in that military, have been forced to engage in very despicable acts like the ones described here. The city's population, whom Russian forces are brutalizing, is overwhelmingly Russian-speaking. These are the very people President Putin had the temerity to claim, uh, to claim to the world that he sought to, quote unquote, protect. If the world needed any further indication that Putin's justification have, had justifications have been entirely hollow, they need look no further than Mariupol. 
From what we can determine, the city of Mariupol is almost completely destroyed at this point. It's gutted out. A city that sits in what Putin claims is a very pro-Russia part of Ukraine. Southeastern Ukraine, between the Crimea and the Donbass. What percentage of these troops who are doing this, who likely know the real reason for this mission, could possibly support any of this, is the question. Many of them possibly have family in Ukraine. From the Atlantic, a very interesting headline, why can't the West admit that Ukraine is winning? It's an interesting question. The writer claims the West has tended to ignore the progress Ukraine has made since 2014 thanks to hard-won experience and extensive training by the United States, Great Britain, and Canada. The Ukrainian military has proved not only motivated and well-led, but also tactically skilled, integrating light infantry with anti-tank drones, anti-tank weapons, drones, and artillery fire to repeatedly defeat much larger Russian military formations. With the tide perhaps turning, and we certainly hope that it is, tomorrow Biden leaves for Europe and is likely to announce plans to permanently maintain an increased number of U.S. troops into these NATO countries that are near Ukraine and also, of course, near Russia. But before celebrating the potential of the tide turning against Russia in this war, there's clearly a concern about what Putin is capable of if he feels like he's losing or if he feels like his back is against the wall. It's a problem we've been thinking about this entire time. Dmitry Peskov, as Putin's spokesman, went on CNN, refusing to rule out the usage of nuclear weapons. We have a concept of uh, domestic security. And, uh, well, it's public. You can read all the reasons for nuclear uh, arms to be used. So if it is an ex existential threat for our country, then it can be used in accordance with our concept. That is certainly something to worry about.